ancestor, Frederick Douglass, who is the greatest black leader of the 19th century, the only black man to be free and a leader in both slavery and freedom. In many respects, my work is a continuation of his and the greatest black leader of the 20th century, His Excellency, the provisional president of Africa, leader of the largest black organization in modern history, Marcus Messiah Garvey. <laughs> Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and depreciate agitation are like men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain but can't stand the thunder or the lightning. They want the ocean but they're scared of the awful roar of its waters. He said, those who want to be free must themselves strike the first blow. He said, for 20 years, I prayed on my knees to God for freedom, but the good Lord gave Frederick no freedom until I got up off my knees and started praying with my feet. He said, if you want respect from white people, stop looking for pity. The man who pities you will never respect you, and the man who respects you has no need for pity. He said, but most of all, you remember that power can seize nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey said, without confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you have started. Marcus Garvey was once asked, are you African or are you Jamaican? Are you African or are you Jamaican? And in response to that, the man who gave us, Malcolm X, who was a child of the Garvey movement, Elijah Poole of the Garvey movement, who started the Nation of Islam, the Rastafari brothers who founded that great movement, who come through the Garvey movement. He said, I would never, ever, ever give up a continent for an island. I am an African. Brothers and sisters, my ancestors came to America in 1701. A black man stolen from West Africa named Bailey, who was brought to Talbot County, Eastern Shore, Maryland. He married a black woman named Selah, for whom my four-year-old daughter is named. They had a daughter named Jenny in 18, excuse me, 1745. 1774, Jenny had Grandma Betsy. Grandma Betsy married a free black man, Grandpa Isaac. 1700s. They had 12 children. They had my Aunt Harriet and my five times great grandmom, Young Betsy. These two sisters was raped by Aaron Anthony, who owned our family. As a result of that rape, Frederick Bailey was born, who escaped to freedom and changed his name from Frederick Bailey to Frederick Douglass. My grandfather, Stephen, was born the next year, the result of a rape by Frederick's auntie, my five times great grandmother, Betsy. When the Civil War popped off, Uncle Fred sent two sons, Lewis and Charles. If you ever saw the movie Glory, it's about the sons of Frederick Douglass. My grandfather Stephen married a black woman on a plantation, guy Grandma Caroline, who didn't learn to read until 1909, the year the NAACP was founded. Their firstborn son was George Washington Bailey, my three times great grandfather, the first black public school teacher in Talbot County, Maryland. After the war, he married Grandma Annie. They had Grandma Caroline. She moved to Philadelphia. She had Grandma Vivian. She married my Spanish-speaking great-grandfather Cicero from Cuba. They had Grandma Ida who married Grandpa James Johnson who had Jamal. Jamal married Barbara. And on August the 21st, 1974, on the anniversary of the Nat Turner War, I was born. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we can win Atlanta and we will win. Please mark your calendars for March the 25th. March the 25th and 26th, I will be hosting the National Independent Black Parent Association Conference. We need chapters in Atlanta. We need chapters in, what's all your other cities? LaGrange, Augusta, Macon, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. If you care about our children, Please come to the conference on Friday and Saturday. I know Easter is Sunday when white Jesus rose. But on Friday and Saturday, please come to the conference. A special ed committee to fight against special ed fraud. A discipline committee to fight against unfair suspensions and expulsion. Finance committee to investigate how they spend your tax money because it's not going on your child. A policy committee to change the rules in the schools that hurt our children. 
Your daughter lived on the west side of Atlanta. You wanted to go to school on the east side because the east side got the better school. The principal told you she can't go on the school on the east side. She got to go to school in her zip code. That's not no state law. That's a racist policy that was initiated during desegregation to keep certain schools in Atlanta all white. There will be a social support committee to support our struggling students, parents. There will be a homeschool committee if you're homeschooling your child who you want to help you do it right because some of you ain't doing nothing but home fooling the hell around with those kids. 